Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, we're going to be going through a new Unity package that we have on our asset store, which is our Unity Ads add-on. You can find this package on our website at www.infogamerhub.com store. And we're currently offering this package for $3 or you can sign up to become a supporter and get it for free. Now in this package, we've essentially taken care of all of the code in order to get Unity ads working in your project. We've also made it into a simple drag and drop system to make it super easy to use. So let's show you how to use this add-on with Unity ads to get Unity ads working in your project within no time. All right, so here I have a demo environment opened up inside of Unity, and I've set up this project with a couple demo scenes that all have just one UI button which loads the player into the next scene. Now the first thing that you want to do is enable Unity ads for your project. To do this you'll want to open up the services window which you can do by going to window, general, and then services. Now if you haven't already you'll need to create a new project ID for this project. To do this you'll have to be signed into Unity and then you can select the organization and click create. But I already have a demo project ID and so I'm going to click on I already have a Unity project ID. Then I'm going to select the organization and select my project. You'll then click link and then click yes. From here you can then enable ads for your project by clicking on the ad service. You'll then need to toggle on this switch here. Now if this is the first time that you're enabling ads for this project, it may ask you whether or not this project is made for kids. And once you decide that, it'll take you to this menu here. At this point, we then need to go to your Unity dashboard, and you can do that by clicking on the Go to Dashboard button. This will open up your Unity dashboard in a new browser tab, after which you can click on Projects from the left-hand column. You'll then need to select your new project from this list. Once you have your project selected, you'll want to click on Monetization and then Placements. Now by default, they'll already have a video placement and a reward video placement. But if you decide to have banner ads in your project, you'll need to create a banner ad placement. To do this, you'll click on Add Placement. You'll then need to enter in a placement ID. And I'll just call it Banner. You can then select the banner add placement and click create placement. Now at this point I would also recommend that if you want to have multiple options for reward ads that you create more than one reward ad placement type. I'd also like to point out that right here we have our game IDs for both Google Play and the App Store and we'll be referencing these IDs later in this video. But once you have your ad placements created we'll go back to Unity at this point, in order to get banner ads working in our project, we need to make sure that we have the latest version of the Unity Ads package. To do this, we'll want to open up the Package Manager, which you can do by going to Window and then Package Manager. From here, you'll want to find the package which is called Ads and expand it, after which you should see at least two versions of this package. You want to make sure that you select the latest version, which for me is 3.47. And so you want to make sure that you have this version or later. Once you have it selected, we'll then click on Update to 3.47. Once it's updated, we can then import our Unity package. To do this, we'll go up to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package. You'll then need to find the location which you've saved our Unity package and open it. This will open up a new window in which you want to make sure that you leave everything selected and click import. But I already have this package in my project so I'll just close it. Now in this package you should have a couple of prefabs, scripts, and one sprite image. Now to implement this package the first thing that you'll want to do is find the Unity Ads Initializer prefab. With this prefab selected, there's a field for inputting the Android and iOS IDs from your Unity dashboard. So you'll need to go back to your Unity dashboard, and with your project selected, you can click on the Copy button for each of these game IDs, then go back to Unity and paste it into the corresponding field. You can then toggle on whether or not you want test mode to be enabled. 
and it's recommended that you have test mode enabled while developing your project, but you'll want to disable it before publishing your game. Once you've changed these settings, you'll then want to drag the Unity Add Initializer prefab into your first scene, and it's preferable if that scene is a splash screen scene. Now this prefab takes care of linking your project to those game IDs on your Unity dashboard. Next up, let's take care of the interstitial ads, which are ads that play automatically at certain points in your game. To do this, we'll select the Video Add Player prefab. With this prefab, there's one setting that you can change, which is the time between each interstitial ad. By default, I have it set to 80 seconds, but you can set it to whatever time you want to have. We then need to go to any scene in your game that you want to have an interstitial ad play when that scene is loaded. A good suggestion would be a game over scene. So I'm going to go to my scenes and I'm going to open up the demo for scene. We'll then select the video ad player prefab and drag it into the hierarchy. And that's all it takes to set up interstitial ads for your project. Now every time the scene is loaded, if it's been over 80 seconds since the last interstitial ad, then a new interstitial ad will play. Next let's set up the banner ads. All you have to do for banner ads is select the banner ads prefab. For this prefab, all you have to do is make sure that the placement ID variable matches the same name as what you typed in for your banner ad placement in your Unity dashboard. For me, I typed in just banner. You can then set the position for your banner ad, which is a drop down menu, and I believe the most ideal position would either be top center or bottom center. But for this prefab, you actually don't have to drag it into any scene. Finally, we have reward ads, which are the most difficult. For this, we'll select our reward ad prefab, which is the only prefab in this package that has any visible components. This prefab is a UI button, and so you'll need to attach it to a canvas. And you can attach it to any canvas in your project where you want to give the player the option to watch a reward ad. And so I'm going to add this prefab to the canvas in my game over scene. I'm then going to reposition it. And of course, feel free to change any of the visual components of this prefab. Now to get the reward ads working, all you have to do is set the placement ID variable so that it matches the same as what you've added to your Unity dashboard. And as I said earlier, you can have more than one reward ad placement ID in case you want to have different options for players to watch a reward ad. You'll just want to make sure that you set the placement ID for each individual instance of this prefab and not just the prefab itself. Now that takes care of setting up all the different ads, but there's one last thing that we need to do with reward ads and that is handling the actual reward. For this I've created a demo script which I've called give reward and we'll go ahead and open that up. Inside this code, the first thing that you'll notice is that we have one line of code in both the onEnable function and the onDisable function. For the onEnable function, we are subscribing to an action event which is happening when the reward ad finishes. The action event is called onRewardAdFinished and we're triggering this onGiveReward function when the action occurs. For the onDisable function, we're just unsubscribing to that action event. Now for the onGiveReward function, there's a parameter which is of type string, and it's called placement ID. And so when this action event is triggered, it actually passes a string value to this function, which is the placement ID for the reward ad that just played. Inside this function, I have multiple if statements for different string values. So all you have to do is change the string value that you're comparing the placement ID to to match whatever placement IDs you actually have in your Unity dashboard. If you only have one placement ID for a reward ad, then you only need one if statement. If you have more than two, then you'll have to create another if statement. Then inside each if statement is where you add the code that rewards the player with whatever you want to reward them with. 
It could be coins or gems or being able to continue on with the game that they just lost, but with more health. And it's a good idea to be creative and generous with the actual rewards because the reward ads are what pay the most out of the three different placement options. And so you kind of want to give incentive for the player to actually watch the reward ads. Now once again, this class is more of a demo class in which you can just copy the code inside it and paste it into any of the other scripts in your game where you want to reward the player. And the main reason why I set it up this way is because when I download a package, I like to be able to just use it and maybe modify some of my own code to interact with that package. But what I don't want to have to do is tinker with any of the scripts that come with the package in order to get those scripts to interact with my personal scripts. All right, so here I've made modification to this script. I'm going to save it. We'll go back to Unity. I'll then just add this demo give reward add prefab to my game over scene. And then I should be able to test my project and see if it works. So I'm gonna load into my demo one scene and we'll click play. All right, so I'm gonna click next. And here you can see that we're now in demo two and we have some don't destroy on load game objects. The first is the add timer. This counts down our timer for the interstitial ads. And then we have our banner add object. And in our game scene, you can see that we have a space for a banner ad that says this would be your banner. Now I'm going to click next again, which will load me into demo three. We still have our banner ad and our ad timer. I'm then going to click next one more time. Here you can see that our interstitial ad has played. I'm going to click close. We then have our watch ad button. I'm going to click on that. It'll play the reward ad. I can then close that. And here in my console, we have a debug message which says give reward. I can then click the next button and that takes me back to demo two, which would be my main menu. Then if I click next again and next again, you can see that this time our interstitial ad didn't play because it hasn't been 80 seconds yet. If I loop through it again, though, there we have it again because it has been 80 seconds since the last one. And so it looks like everything is working just fine. Now normally when implementing Unity ads into your project, you would have to go to the getting started tutorial which has a bunch of code that you would have to create scripts for and copy and paste all of this code in order to get it working in your project. And so we've eliminated all of that by creating this add-on which pretty much just has a couple drag and drop steps. And so once again, if you're looking for something like this, make sure that you go to our asset store at www.infogamerhub.com store where you can find our Unity Ads add-on. Now thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.